Sunday with Nationwide Internet Banking. Good evening, welcome to Soccer Sunday. So many goals, so little time, but rest assured we've got the best from the Northwest. A good old Lancashire hot pot at the Reebok, and there'll be second helpings. It was ebb and flow, nick, nip and tuck, and uh, you know, there was uh, lots of passion, lots of commitment, and lots of good football as well. A feast of goals from the Nationwide League. We've a pair of tickets to give away for the Worthington Cup final. And we've got Team of the Week as per usual. But in Preston, would you believe it, it's been banned. More of that later, but let's kick off with the pick of yesterday's FA Cup games. For Blackburn Rovers and Bolton Wanderers, it was Act 1, Part 1. They'll meet again next Friday to dispute promotion places in Division 1. Alistair Mann went to the Reebok to savour the first episode of what could become a truly epic series. It'll be Taylor to take the throw. Up towards Janssen. And Janssen in the clear! Oh, good save by Jürgen Sommer. Out quickly and beat it away. Summerby guides in the corner. Headed away not far though, the shot by Farrelly, deflected and off the line by Alan Moore. Ricketts, Nolan, good skills by him. He's caught by Gary Flickcroft and Gary Flickcroft's already been booked. The referee waves play on, here's Ricardo Gardner and Bolton have themselves a corner, Nolan is down. And the referee is administering a second yellow card and Flickcroft goes inside 10 minutes. Helped on by Ricketts in path of Farrelly. Good shot by Farrelly and a great save by Friedel. Good play from Bent. He's still going, Marcus Bent. The shot, oh, he reaches Janssen, Matt Janssen, and blocked by Sommer, who's still hobbling through that earlier injury. But he made the save. Duff and Dunn over it, Duff runs over it, Dunn bends it and Summer is helpless to stop it going in and Blackburn are ahead. Poor old Jürgen Summer to the spot, his injury hampering him and the ten men lead. OK. Flick on by Ricketts and Gardner and just wide, just beyond the upright. Throw guided on, flicked on, I think, by Berg and Charlton, and off the line by Berg and in by Ricketts. And Henning Berg couldn't keep it out. And the scoring machine has another. Michael Ricketts, the 19th of the campaign. 1 1. And Charlton opening up in front of him. And Summerby, and wrong footed is Friedel, and it's poked away though by Short. And it stays 1 1. Ten men, I mean, it's always hard to play against. You know, the other team were a full, full side, but we just, I'm a bit disappointed we didn't get a result after, after all the work we've done. You want to be, go as far as you can, and we, we feel we can go quite far in this competition, and obviously we didn't want to play them again, but that's what we have to do now, so let's just get on with it. It was ebb and flow, nick, nip and tuck, and, uh, you know, there was lots of passion, lots of commitment, and lots of good football as well, and both, both uh, people created lots of chances in both goal areas, and I think when fans turn up, especially in the FA Cup, that's what they like to see. Any concerns about the games in hand mounting up? No, no. I, I, you know, there's two ways to look at it, the way I choose to look at it. If you're going well in cup competitions, um, the confidence spills over into your league programme. We know what's most important for us, but at the same time, it is the FA Cup, and the FA Cup's a special competition. Well, we'll be bringing you extended highlights of the league match between Bolton and Blackburn in a soccer night special next Friday at 30. Back to the cup now, and the big stage beckoned for both Stockport and Tranmere. Here's Mick Channon. Tranmere's latest cup excursion saw them frustrate Southampton at the Dell in a game that saw the Saints have three goals disallowed and numerous shots just wide of the mark. Dean Richards went first, Hassan Cashall the offside culprit, before a slip from Klaus Lundekvam saw Andy Parkinson with a clear run on goal. 
The Rovers frontman denied by a super Paul Jones save. Southampton's second half pressure wasn't converted into goals. Joe Tessum, released by Bur, saw his cross shot shaven upright. If they needed a sign that it wasn't to be the Saints' day, only moments later, Tessum centred for Cashlall. But Richard Jobson's block ensured that once again, Aldo can plot a premiership downfall in the replay at Prenton Park. Stockport's big day out was spoiled not so much by Tottenham's four-goal dismissal, but by the fact that an Edgley Park virus had affected most of Andy Kilner's men. Ledley King nodded home the opener only five minutes in, before Les Ferdinand combined with Eustace Simon Davis, whose poise and precision awarded him with his first goal for Spurs on the half-hour mark. To add insult to injury, Stockport did score, but at the wrong end. Mike Flynn, with Ferdinand breathing down his neck, could only pile on the misery for his keeper, Lee Jones. And with the game over as a contest, Spurs could relax. Davis latching on to a through ball five minutes after the restart for his second. Although in truth, County were by no means all bad. No cup glamour for the remainder of our Division One clubs yesterday. Crew and Burnley got on with more domestic matters. Here's Christian Hills. Burnley have only themselves to blame for missing out on at least a point at relegation threat and Grimsby. The worst miss of the afternoon followed Ian Moore's excellent approach play. Steve Davis inexplicably chose to defend rather than attack at the wrong end of the field. The only goal of the game arrived on 55 minutes. Zangahuna profiting from some awful claret defending to lift him away from the drop zone. And Grimsby's result meant that Crewe needed another victory and they again showed that they can produce the goods needed for first division football. No one's more capable of that than Mark Rivers. His runner line Rodney Jack to claim his fourth of the season. 17-year-old Dean Ashton wasn't even born when Dario Grady arrived at Gresty Road in 1983, but he capped a man of the match performance with a goal. Three points on Dario's 800th game in charge of Alex. Time for a break now, but stay with us for a chance to win tickets to the Worthington Cup final next Sunday. We'll also have the best of the action from Divisions 2 and 3. And the feature that's causing all the controversy, Team of the Week. Soccer Sunday with Nationwide Internet Banking. in life you just wouldn't want to repeat neither would we we play the same song more than once 105.4 century fm home of the no repeat work day granddad's gonna go for some tea well he's got time to practice he doesn't have to go to work every day like Daddy. Why? He's retired. Standard Life pensions perform consistently well, so you can spend your retirement doing exactly what you want to do. Just think, James, when you're granddad's age, you can play every day. You still won't be able to hit the thing. <laughs> Standard Life. For pensions, investments, healthcare and banking. Soccer Sunday with Nationwide Internet Banking. Welcome back. Coming up, there's a chance to win tickets to see this cup awarded on Sunday at the Worthington Cup final. But first, let's take a look at the best of the action from Division 2 and 3. Wigan shared the JJB with the town's rugby league side and Derek Stilley's tackle on Ansar Owasu came straight out of the Super League handbook. Fortunately, ref Bill Burns waved play on. The Latics did have their chances to seal a valuable win. Darren Sheridan's endeavour creating a golden opportunity for Neil Roberts, but his shot rippled the wrong side of the net. More than 22,000 packed into the Britannia for the big Potteries derby, and it was the form side Stoke who took the lead. Iderigo's cross was headed home by James O'Connor in the 54th minute to send the majority of time with a deserved equaliser. 
Tony Naylor's pass teeing up Dave Brammer to score a 20-yard screamer, salvaging a point and Pottery's pride. Liverpool star John Newby's helping stabilise the Shakers, who looked to be in free fall only two weeks ago. Martin Forrest releasing the 22-year-old for his first of his brace against Oxford. And Newby made it three goals in three games after Paul Reid powered his way through the U's defence. The simplest of tappings to steady the nerves of the gig lane faithful. Six minutes later and Chris Armstrong sealed their third win on the bounce from manager Andy Priest's deep cross. Priest is now hoping he can hang on to lucky charm Newby for longer than a month. And he's come here, you know, and he's played every game and he's enjoying it. I think he'd like to stay, but obviously that depends on Liverpool, their situation when his month's up. But, you know, we'd like to keep him, um, you know, and he, he's definitely made a difference to us. Uh, and he's a smashing lad and he's really enjoying his football. Wrexham are also struggling to find form, but a wonder strike from defender Mark McGregor was enough. Colchester and give the Robins their first league win since Boxing Day. Wigan stay in line for automatic promotion with Stoke up to fourth in the table. Wrexham and Bury are breathing a little easier in mid-table, while Port Vale's points keeps them out of the relegation places. Into Division 3 and it was a long trip back for Rochdale's travelling fans from Torquay. Kevin Hill strike the only goal of the game to dent Dale's playoff aspirations. Blackpool moved into a playoff position with a 2-0 win against struggling Lincoln. My pronunciation might be wrong, but I believe Danny Shitu scored on his debut after his lone move from Charlton. Brett Omrad then raced past the Imps defence and he should have put the game safe. Stevie Walsh with a great tackle, but Omrad's persistence did pay off as John Murphy arrived to sidefoot his 17th of the season. A tepid encounter at the Moss Rose saw promotion hopefuls Hartlepool snatch a 1-0 win. Mark Tinkler rising above the Macclesfield defence at the near post to head home. Rochdale are in six with only Goblin separating them from Steve McMahon's Seasiders, with Mike just outside the top half on 38 points. Oh, well done, Blackpool, who are looking increasingly good for a playoff place. Now, back to the FA Cup, and it won't have escaped your attention that Liverpool and Manchester City locked horns at Anfield this afternoon. If you missed it, here's the pick of the action with Peter Drury and Ron Atkinson. fixture con congestion at this time of the year but they are great fixtures aren't they well it's I mean from a club's point of view and for the fans point of view it's better to uh, to be you know to have uh, more fixtures and probably that's a ransom of success and uh, but we must not be carried away so far we haven't won anything and uh, next week uh, an important game for us uh, against Birmingham and uh, in midweek we've got the Roma game so you know let, let's Let's achieve what we want to achieve. We are now away somewhere, but uh, it's still a long way. Well, 
Congratulations to Liverpool. The draw for the sixth round has just been made and it's interesting reading for our clubs. If John Aldridge's Tranmere can beat Southampton, they'll entertain Liverpool. The winners of the Bolton-Blackburn replay face perhaps the toughest tie of all, a trip to Highbury to play Arsenal who beat Chelsea 3-1 today. Liverpool, though, have to concentrate for two other cop competitions. On Thursday, they play Roma in the second leg of the UEFA Cup tie. And on Sunday, they play Birmingham for this, the Worthington Cup. We have a pair of tickets to give away to the final in Cardiff. All you have to do is watch the following action and answer the question at the end. Liverpool winning the League Cup for the fifth time in 1995. Our question is, which year did Liverpool first win the trophy? Was it A, 1980, B, 1981 or C, 82? Please send your entries with your name, address and contact number to Soccer Sunday, Granada Television, Key Street, Manchester, M69EA. And the winner will be the first correct entry out of the hats. Liverpool on the trophy trail again. And on that subject, this week the club is paying tribute to its greatest trophy winner, Bob Paisley. Thursday has been designated as Paisley Day at Anfield, coinciding with the club's home fixture with Roma, and a chance for the fans to look back at the glory years when the great man carried a total of 19 cups into the trophy room. To mark the celebrations, you can see a special programme on Granada this Tuesday at 7.30. And here's a taster. Bob Zira didn't do anything wrong with the team, the picking of the players, the transfers, everything touched turned to goal. But when you talk about greatness of trophies, what you've won and what you, you've, uh, what you did, Bob Paisley is the best. Everything he ever said was almost always right. And when you have that sort of knowledge, then that knowledge is respect. Don't miss it. The team of the week now, and guess what? We've been banned. The Lancashire Evening Post Sunday League, based in Preston, have forbidden their teams from taking part. They say we treat football in a derogatory manner. They say we don't take it seriously. They want to know why we don't want to cover their best clubs, preferring to target the lower divisions. Well, guess what, chaps? We think you've missed the point. Anyway, we couldn't go to Preston, so we nipped down the road to Chorley instead. Team of the Week features Adlington Nomads with their bold 4-3-3 formation and they come with a promise of goals. With Nil United have two managers similar to that once in place at Anfield, but does it work for them? The whole team's strong, they've done really well. Two seasons ago, rough and bottom in the second division in Shirley, and now we're sitting fourth in the Premiership division. So uh, come on leaps and bounds in the last two seasons and hopefully we'll be up for it today. And equally up for it is referee John Berlin just going through his pre-match aerobics. Here's Gillard. Not a bad ball in. Dangerous stuff. Parry back in by McCarthy and slammed away by Chippendale, who's really become part of the furniture at Adlington. Roberts now. Looks up and finds Bradley, who tucks it in. Difficult for Sands to take. But a young lad playing for us. He's 16 year old, but he's got a mental age of about eight, and he's playing up front with me. So what a sight for us that was. <laughs> Long ball by Tootle, allowed to drop, Chadwick chasing, there's an almighty mix-up, Chadwick with it, blocked by Fordman, Chadwick again, now Roberts and off the line by Parks. Football, well it's simply child's play. Standard in this league's not as good as what it were years ago. Roberts looking for it and getting it, and now Bradley, and he's bundling in, 
Roll. Chadwick, it breaks for him through to Roberts. Oh, it's a penalty. Boardman's challenge, referee in no doubt. Give Bradley to take it, and it's in. Stuttart, the keeper, gutted as he got there, but couldn't keep it out. Westwood with the kick. And Gillen with the goal. It was simple but effective. And a wandering celebration from a Reebok fanatic. Loses long throw. Not cleared. Reaches Gillard. Who scores? Brilliant. What a fantastic strike. And one which his hero Michael Ricketts would be proud. Beat the goat. He will score. Play forward, but Tuchel's lost it, and away comes Waterson. And he finds Gillett, and now Woozy, another one. A well-worked goal, and it's 3-3 in a brilliant first half. I think we'll end up winning about 5-3. I think we'll get two more goals, definitely. Third a shallow day. Will that prediction be right? There's a bit of a sandwich who will emerge from the filling. It's Chadwick. He's still in the clear. Good save by Studart and much appreciated. The pass not really lived up to the first. Oh, and a clash between Gillett and Westwood leaves Gillett like a fillet. The youngster playing with the back of the net. And the Nets won that one. And a goal that both old and young alike will remember for some time. It's 3-3 at the end. Ryan Giggs school of finishing, wasn't it? But he's a United player, so I'll dedicate it to Michael Ricketts. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, if you would like to be on Team of the Week, drop us a line at Team of the Week, Soccer Sunday, Granada Television, Key Street, Manchester, M60 9EA, or email us at soccersunday at granadamedia.com. That's soccersunday at granadamedia.com. Remember, Manchester United against Valencia will be live on digital on Tuesday nights. And don't forget two programmes this week on Granada. There's Paisley the Greatest at 7.30 on Tuesday evening, a tribute to the Liverpool legend. And on Friday, Soccer Night features the crunch game at the top of Division 1 between Bolton and Blackburn. The extended highlights from the Reebok at 11.30. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. performance and we're very unlucky um, to lose 3-2 so I'm sure we can go there with confidence. It'll stutter towards us. Subconscious on BBC One.